Welcome to Geldorf today, 4th of September 1982, and the scene of the trophy donations. The trophy donations, of course, the 250 team event. Next week, of course, we will see we will see the uh, motocross donations, which is the 500 uh, team event. Four riders in each of the teams. Uh, we welcome today the American team over into Europe for the second time. 1981 uh, was their first time over into Europe and of course they uh, they cleaned up, Barry. That's right. There we have our first glimpse of course of the uh, the motocross vehicle there, the Czech one of course, as it as it is situated in the paddock. We have some more paddock work going on there as the uh, the riders help us if you like doing a little bit of titivation to the front end of their machine. Um, Nice shot of the orchard there, Barry. Uh, and uh, somebody uh, enjoying breakfast, is it? Or well, two or three, I would say. But uh, obviously, that doesn't matter on this particular day because everything is so well. Everything is so light-hearted. I mean, the weather's for them, and there's, at the moment, there's not too much of a crowd to uh, get it up, you know, up in arms about. Because obviously, at this sort of level, you get no end of people bothering you. I would imagine for the right reason, but uh, you know, for autograph and it's half put in. There's our first glimpse of the American camp. Number four there, Jim Gibson's bike being fueled up for the weekend. Of course, it, it's the, as I said earlier, the second time that we've seen the Honda team over in Europe. And as we leave the Honda team and Danny Magoo, we listen to what Dave Nicholl has got to say. British team manager Dave Nicholl. On a beautiful sunny Saturday afternoon at Galdorf, and let's hope it stays like it. Uh, welcome, and you have brought the British team out. Can you tell us who the team is, Dave? Yeah, the team is the 250 event, and the team is uh, Graham Noyce, Neil Hudson, Jeremy Watley, and Dave Thorpe. That, of course, is a change from the original team that was projected through injuries, I believe, to Dave Watson. Yeah, unfortunately last week in the Swedish 250 Grand Prix, David Watson broke his collarbone and we've replaced him with Jeremy Watley, who's an able competitor also. What do you think of the British chances, which is uh, getting down to the nitty gritty immediately, isn't it? Well, difficult thing to say today, it's always nerve wracking on the Saturday with qualification, but I think we're in with a very good chance, probably the best for many years and we're keeping our fingers crossed. Who do you consider to be the biggest opposition you've got this afternoon, certainly for qualification? Well, on Saturday everybody's opposition, but um, those we hopefully we get through to tomorrow. And then the Americans are obviously strong as last year's winners, and the Belgians are notoriously strong in this event. Anybody else? Maybe the Dutch. We can go on and on. <laughs> yeah, in other words, you can go through the 16 nations represented. Yeah. Well, I think all as we can say to you, Dave, is the best of luck with your team. And at least we'll see this afternoon the first stage of the competition over, and hopefully we're still there for the second stage. Thanks Thank very much, Dave Nicholl. Thank you. Well, we heard there what uh, Dave Nicholl had um, got to say about his team's chances, and of course we heard uh, him mention Jem Watley. So uh, let's just see what uh, Jem Watley's got to say. 
Well, let's talk to the youngest member in the British team, although I think he's only the youngest member by a month, and welcome Jem Watley to Galdorf. Jem, you must be terribly... Uh, what's the word I wonder? Don't think it's nervous? Uh, worried about this afternoon? Um, well, not really now, because I rode in the under-21 before, so I know roughly what the uh, stretch is, really. And are you happy with the circuit here? Yeah, it's very good. It's, bit, it's quick and uh, very much like English courses. And with the hot weather that we're having, does that drain you in any way? No, not really not now. I've, uh, we've had a few hot days home, so we're getting used to it. Good. Well, uh, let's see that you get a good result this afternoon. That's the main thing. Um, this is, as you say, is the first time you've ridden in the Trophy Donassian, although it's not the first time you've done a team event. Um, do you feel that you have to alter your style of racing, riding in a team event, as opposed to riding as an individual? Um, I think, basically, it all goes on the board, really, what your, um, your signaller puts out. And if you've got another Briton behind you that's quicker, you just let him go on through. And that's really their all is to it, really. Well, let's wish you the best of luck in the qualification this afternoon, and let's see you up on the leaderboard tomorrow, having qualified, I hope, this afternoon. Well, thanks for that, Dave. We'll try. Thanks, Jim. Right. And good afternoon to you. Well, I certainly do hope that everything goes well for, for Jem, especially now as we're coming up to uh, qualification time. I couldn't agree more, Keith. I mean, I've been watching Jeremy Nell for a number of years when he was in the schoolboys, and the lad has really, really come on with experience very, very quickly. Yeah. Really quick little rider. And quite, and very well, um, very well thought of amongst his own uh, sort, I hear, back home. Yeah. Well, here we go, first qualifying race, and... Say no more. Dave Thorpe into the lead straight away, followed there by George Joe Bay, um, 250 runner, of course. This being the, the first of the two qualifying races uh, here on the Saturday. Two riders from each team going uh, in their respective races. The Americans, of course, don't have to uh, qualify because they, they won the Trophy of Nations last year. That's right, Keith. A little bit, I think, you ought to talk about the uh, helmet colours just to give the, uh, the fans the right sort of um, set-up as regards what team they're with. Yeah, mo most of the teams are going to be riding in colours, not necessarily today, but on the actual race day, you'll see riders in their own respective colours. Um, the Irish lads are in orange and green, I think. And, uh, of course, the British lads will be in their green helmets, very famous green helmets. Customary green helmets, British racing green, of course, Keith, quite yeah. right. Then we have a little shot now we can see. I think we're going to be really pleased with the, uh, the conditions for the uh, duration of the, the, the racing, of course. It looks very, very dry Spe at the moment. Spectacular, I think, Barry. Yeah, look at that. Absolutely fantastic shot of some of these lads. Really giving it their all. And remember, it's only kind of a practice period, if you like. Well, they've really got to go for it because each team has got to qualify. That's right. Out of all the teams that are here, um, some teams aren't going to qualify. Some teams are... I would say that the Belgians are bound to qualify. Hopefully the, uh, the English lads are going to qualify, but it's, it's all down to this session and the next session. That's right. I think just to endorse the facts that you've quite rightly said, Keith, uh, I would think almost certainly that the English boy, the Belgians, and of course the American lads have got to stand an outs well, they've got an outstanding chance, obviously. But, uh, you know, not, let's not forget the, the Dutch, of course, have got some very experienced riders. Yes, uh, Van der Ven's here, and of course it's the 250. He's a 250 uh, world championship runner this year. Um, oh, look at the action there, though. There, I think that was Van der Ven going across there. Yeah. Of course, I did forget to mention the Swedes, and I mean, you can never, never, ever leave the Swedes. But you can't, you can't write off any of the teams here, I, I don't think, although they're George Jobet, part of the uh, Belgian team. It's, uh, it's got to be between, I think, those three. Although Rinaldi there in the and the Italian team could bring a few shocks. You there. never know. It's, I mean, it's just like, like the Irish. Like we spoke briefly earlier on about the Irish. When it's a team event, I think it brings that a little bit more out of certain riders. 
And I mean, you know, you've only got to make that one area, uh, that one error, Keith, and it's uh, it's all finished for the day. Yeah, yeah, of course. Remembering on the day, of course, there's... Uh, there's only three that to go through that's for, right, for four. points. Okay. Sorry We're to drag you away from a cup of tea, Jack. Cup of Irish tea, man. Cup, cup of, of Irish, Irish tea. tea. Oh, that's got to be good. But Jack Burnicle, one of the eminent journalists, I think, and out here representing one or two of the UK newspapers. We've just been talking to Dave Nicholl about the English team's chances of uh, qualifying. Someone's just done the same that I did in 1980. <laughs> so right, off, off there was a shot of Chris Scriven really banging his head on the side of an awning, but he's gone off holding his head. We'll get back to business all right, again. All right. um, Dave has been talking about the chances of the English team this afternoon, which he says has been pretty good. And I asked him what he considered to be the biggest amount of opposition. And he said, this afternoon, he didn't think there would be a lot. But, but tomorrow, tomorrow counts. a different kettle of fish. And he stated that the America and Belgium are the two people that he thought you might I don't think you can argue with that. I don't think there are any other teams in the competition that have more than one or at the most two really quality blocks. The guys who can really bring on the goods. Yeah. I think other teams have... One at the most two guys who round this circuit are going to be worth watching and can really bring on the results, but they haven't got the backup. There might be one or two exceptions, like the Italians, say, who've got four very good blokes in their squad, but with the eye ties, it's a, rather a case of whether or not they stop on. And I think the, those sort of questions are always going to be a problem with, with a team like that. It could be the same a little bit with the States, but now that they've brought over, they've had to bring over Bailey, sadly, but they brought over Gibson instead of Schultz to join O'Mara. Now, those three guys are good, and we know that Magoo is fast, and if he stays on, he's tremendous. So they've, I think with just bringing Magoo, there's only one really debatable rider in their squad. I think the other three are good riders. Can you tell us a little bit about the Donny Hansen incident? We heard this morning that he's out of the racing. Can you tell us why? Apparently, he's still unconscious after three days. He had a practice accident when he, he ended and landed nastily on top of his head. And uh, as far as I can make out, all his other bodily functions are fine. But I believe they've had to drill a small hole in the back of his skull to relieve some of the pressure on the brain to get some fluid out. So it doesn't sound terribly well at the moment. The, they, what they're trying to do is keep the worst of the news away from the American lads, especially O'Mara, who's a particular friend of Donnie's, I believe. Well, uh... That is unfortunate that we've lost Donny Hansen. Now, also this week, we lost Hakan Karlquist out of the Swedish team. Can you tell us a little more about That's that? That's right. Well, he, he apparently pulled out of a Swedish championship race as soon as he realised that the only guy who could beat him, who was Arne Lindfors, also a member of the Swedish squad, had crashed and broken his arm. Now, Karla claimed he pulled out because he wants to see more fairer start money, especially for privateers in Swedish national championships. But... The Swedish Federation didn't quite see it his way. They thought he was depriving spectators of, of their worth, and they suspended him for two months, as from September the 1st. But, of course... Which is bad luck for their squad, unfortunately. It is, and, of course, it's also bad luck for the German organisers here, because Karl Chris last year won both races in the motocross de Nation at, uh, at Bilstein. Bilstein. That's right. And he must have been a, a big drawing man here, because he goes very... In 1980, at the Grand Prix here, he went very fast. Well, we understand that there is going to be a protest from the German Federation. Is there? Oh, I didn't know that the FIM yeah. about the disciplining of Carquist so early. Certainly it was done in considerable haste and without any sort of uh, conf conf conference going on with anyone else. And the, uh, the unfortunate manager of um, the Swedish team, who Carl has always, always fondly referred to as Baldy, our friend Hans, reckons yeah. that now they've got a good squad to win the B races with. Is that right? But don't forget, they've got Aberg, Benk Aberg and, know, and Torleaf Hansen isn't it? combined age 72. And Torleaf, as he showed in Vimmerby last, last weekend in the Swedish 250 Grand Prix, is going very quickly, 34 years old and out of the top line for four years now since he retired. Yeah. But he's still terrific. And what about Bent Aberg coming back? Well, he might be fairly quick round here because he doesn't like too many bumps at the age of 38. He pulled out of Vimmerby because he said it was getting a bit too bumpy for him. So round here... He might surprise somebody, but I think, to be honest, the years do begin to catch up sooner or later, and he has been out of top-line competition for a while. 
But Torley Hansen has wrapped up the Swedish 250 national championship. I believe, yeah. He's and beating the youngsters still. As you say, the last week he put on an excellent And last year he put on a, last week he put on an excellent second race for 40 minutes, yeah. which he said before and he wasn't capable of. But he okay. proved us wrong. Well, just to sum it up then, very quickly then, Jack, your final verdict on the opposition. Um, I fear the USA strongly. I fear the USA very strongly, and I keep I can't get away from this nagging feeling that we'll be seeing the Belgians minus Malherb and the Englishmen fighting for runner-up spot behind them. I hope I'm wrong, but I can't help but see it that way. I hope you are as well. But anyway, thanks, <laughs> thanks very much, Jack, and look Thank forward you, David. to seeing how your predictions work out so over the next I. couple of days. Thank you, Jack. Cheers, David. <laughs> to the second of the qualifying races now, Barry. Must give credit to the cameraman there. I know I shouldn't, but I've got to. I'm in a superb bit of photography there. And there was one of the lads there with his foot well off the peg. They say it, really scenic this afternoon. Really beautiful view of the uh, West German countryside there. Yeah, of course, it's going to be absolutely crowded tomorrow, packed out with people tomorrow, I would, uh, I would think. Although there are, there are quite a few people here already. That's right. I'm, I would imagine a, an unbelievable crowd now tomorrow. A really good sidewinder shot, as I call it. Two Belgians up in front there, uh, Bromans and Everts, I think. Yeah. Followed by Dutchman... And Jem Watley there. Jem Watley. Uh, very well up. Very well placed. Off the coast and the Neil Hudson, the, the second of the two British riders out in this qualifying race. N Neil looks very determined this afternoon. I had a little word with him earlier on and he looked, looks really in a determined mood. Yeah. Is that one of the Americans gone by then? No, no, uh, one of the, uh, the Irish lads there in the, what I said earlier on, the, the green and orange shirt. That's right, that's right, getting a bit of confused. Of course, not, not everybody in uh, their we go own here. colour at the moment, because it, it doesn't really matter. It's a non-important sort of thing, yeah. Obviously, it's still very warm down there. We see a, a bare-skinned gentleman down there, so obviously he's enjoying this afternoon. No, I just hope that it's going to last until uh, tomorrow. Yeah, let's, uh, let's keep, keep our fingers crossed anyway. These bikes taking hell of a hammer in, though, at the moment, and these jumps, there's quite a few in this circuit. Yeah. Very, very, very spectacular circuit, and those uh, back wheels and rear suspensions and swinging arms are taking a hell of a bang it, battering. That's right, Keith. How long, in your estimation, would it take for a cameraman to go around and suss out the best possible um, advantage points on this particular track? Advantage points like this, most cameramen make a beeline for, but uh, this track is an ultra spectacular track, as you can see. And uh, there are very, very few spots that uh, you that you get sort of dull, very plain, bland images from. That's right, as you say, just to uh, elaborate on that further, obviously in this sort of circuit this afternoon, uh, no matter where you're viewing from, you're going to get a spectacular view. And there, there you are, very spectacular <laughs> bit there from uh, exactly what we, we were saying before Suspense about the uh, taking the hammering. Take the, the hammering. Sunday morning and the crowd's coming in already. Yes, really beginning to build up as we did anticipate uh, quite correctly, I imagine. Uh, uh, very nice, very nice bit of transport there, Barry. S someone doing it in the style. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, we get the uh, the j jockeys back in England coming in the by, by helicopters, but now we have the, uh, well, if you like to call them the motocross jockeys, they're obviously yeah. rather in style. Very smart it is too. Yeah, so, Sunday, 5th of September, day of the Trophy donations. This is the big one. 1982. And the crowd, look, already, already there. And as we hoped, absolutely unbelievable weather. Yeah, fabulous. Yeah. Fabulous day today. I think it helps to make the race in. I mean, there's nothing worse than teaming rain or whatever. There's the drum majorettes there, and very, very nice to look to. Very smart, very smart. Leading the procession of riders out. 
I say that's one thing with motocross over the last few years, especially on the continent, Keith, I expect you'll agree, they really do it in style, really do it in style. Yeah, yeah very, very much so. I mean, we, we see American football, uh, and we see how stylish they put on that particular event, and I think it's pretty well true to say that uh, the Europeans have followed suit. Yeah, it's a very colourful, very spectacular sport. You see there, as we said earlier on, about the riders in their team colours. There you see uh, Bent Berg and Torleif Hansen just going through. As I expect um, as well, you'll agree with me, it's a very de demanding sport as well and they've got to be absolutely A1 to physically fit. 100%. With Dave uh, Nicol, of course, the English, English manager. With Jeremy Watley this side, uh, Graham Noyce, Neil Hudson and Dave Thorpe. All looking very pleased with themselves, I might add. Yeah, yeah. looks like they're the only ones with the sunshades. Because <laughs> we're not used that much, are we, Keith? Not over in the in England, no, but it's a, a fabulous day today. There's the Irish coming on, yeah. a bit of suspense there. Just Lawrence Spence and Stephen Russell, two, uh, two riders who are, are quite young in age, but, 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 uh, but very, uh, very old in experience. Yeah, quite right. Here's the uh, German team there. Very partisan crowd, of course, today. They're going to, be, going to be cheered all the way around. That's right, that's right. Mind you, we're saying that they've got some very good riders, of course. Here's the Americans, Barry. Handsome lot, they look as well, Keith. Yeah. Johnny O'Mara there. Blonde bombshell, can yeah. we call him? I think they're all pretty well blonde, aren't they, the Americans? Yeah, Jim Gibson there, number four, David Bailey, number one, and uh, Magoo doesn't really know where he wants to go. I hope he realises he's got to do a bit better that on the track. Uh, one, two, three, four. But they're the team that's, <laughs> going to be this, that's going to be beaten today. I think so, very young looking riders they are, of course. I expect now there's a few, uh, obviously we see a few smiling faces, but I've I still think there's a few butterflies on the mountain there. So it's, there's, there's got to be. There's got to be, of course, because they're flying their flag. That's right. As you can see on the chests of the, the English lads there, they've thought contemplating the afternoon's racing, I think. Yeah, but he always enjoys his racing anyway, Keith, doesn't he? I think Neil the Hudson's there. almost into a yawn there. That's before the race <laughs> starts. Oh, well. Back to the Irish lads. But it is hot out here. Very hot. That's. I, I think. I think that's going to be the main. Um, the main reason for a lot of flagging riders. I think at the end of the day, I would yeah. not. You know, obviously it's going to be a very demanding track, Keith, uh, regarding machinery. But with that in sort of intense heat, there we have a, a little bit of a, a reason there. There's a lad looking on. Yes, it's not time to go yet, young man. Waiting for the riders to come out now onto the line for the first of the two races. There comes the first rider. Yeah, first rider, number four, that's Jim Gibson, the American. And uh, as we said before, Keith, uh, before the gate goes down, they are in their proper coloured helmets. Yeah, yeah. green helmets. Hello, there, Neil, Neil Hudson there with his British racing green helmet on. And of course, the Americans are all in the same colours there with a, a blue helmet with a, a white stripe on the top. Notice the different Honda, the American equipped Honda to the European. If yes, right we'll, we'll, see, we'll see that when uh, Graham Noyce comes out mm. with his, uh, his European Honda. Yeah. And uh, we'll see the difference between uh, Graham's Honda and uh, one of the American Hondas. There's the big uh, lad himself, Dave Thorpe, on the green uh, beanie. Very well turned out motor as well. Very well turned out. He Throws That's a leg uh, back off the machine to juggling. Henk van Mierlo there, number 11 on the Suzuki from uh, Holland. The Dutch riders all in orange today, so we can look out for the orange shirts. Uh, the Belgian riders in yellow. The uh, Noises machine now, there we can see the difference. the difference. We'll see just behind him, there. Now we, you can just see the difference between the two Hondas. The tank, if you like to call it a tank fairing, to use a better word, you can see that's yeah, one of the... Uh, much, much lower on the American machine. A view being blocked uh, there by uh, one of the, the Dutch riders. Well, ready for the off then, Barry? Yeah, the gate's down there away. That's where they go. 
Who's going to be first into the corner? The all-important corner. It looks like Watley. Watley, it looked like to me. Yeah, it's the Americans, though. Yeah, it's the Americans. First and second. And it looks like it's the first five or six places are dominated by Americans, English and Belgian riders. Quite correctly, obviously. Oh, oh, oh there's, there's Noyce, though. Graham Noyce in quite a low position, really. So, uh, not like Graham. No. Obviously, of very, very much of importance is the start, especially on the sort of uh, duration of the... If you can get a little bit of a cushion between you and the rest of the pack, it's all important because the, the body temperature will really build up at later stages. Yeah, it's, uh, it really is a hot day here today. In, and look at the crowd. The crowd enjoying every, absolutely every, every second of it. Although we're only half a lap over through the race, but we'll see now uh, coming up for the leaders. We'll see who, who, yeah, it's O'Mara, O'Mara from Magoo, so America 1 and 2, followed closely there by Watley, uh, Gibson, Broman, no, there's Broman's, uh, Bailey and Thorpe. So as we expected, it's the so, Americans at yeah. the moment from the English lads, and the English lads are doing very well yeah. at yeah, the moment. Except, exceptionally well. At the moment, of course, the view is not being impaired by any dust, but I can't honestly see it staying that way, Keith, the way these big knobbies are ripping this West German ground out this afternoon. And there's there's something very unexpected there. That's Case van der Ven, number nine, on the KTM, right at the back of the field. So there's something probably gone wrong with uh, with Casey's bike, or he's, oh, he, he may even have been uh, being knocked off. But Watley's really pushing hard. He he's holding third, Jeremy's holding really third very well. quite well. You say earlier on, when, the, when I had a little chat with him, he, he did seem very, very pleased with his machinery. Yeah, yeah. And that's half the battle, I think. There's uh, Hudson, the so second, going. third of the British riders gone through. There we have a real good shot of the massive crowd this afternoon. Really, really, really massive crowd. There's Noyce, that's the fourth of the British lads through. And the Red but, Rocket. Quite lowly place, though. Mind you, I think it's true to say, Keith, Graham's not had the best of years. Would you, would you agree this, this year? He's had, he's had his ups and downs, mm. definitely. But let's see if it's still the Americans. It is, yeah. It's O'Mara. O'Mara from Magoo, from Watley, Gibson, Romans. Just shows you how close they are packed. And Everts and Bailey. And that pack's moving away. That's the first of the German riders through there. And there's Hudson on the Yamaha, just nipping in front of that 65 was, I think, Graf Diefenbach. Diefenbach it was indeed, Keith. But the pace is really beginning to hot up now in front. As I said, we had Amara in the lead from Magoo, from Watley. So, they have, obviously, we said it would be the, um, the English, the Americans, and obviously the Swedes are going to come into contention a bit later on during the race, but at the moment the Swedes are really down. We haven't seen any Swedes go through at the moment, Keith. No, no, it's uh, it's got to be the Americans, even at this early early stage of uh, of the race. They've got four riders in the in the first eight. That's right, and very accomplished riders they are too. Yeah, and it's consistent the consistency that counts in this type of event. That's right. Remember, only three of the four count. Three of the four places only count in the points this afternoon. Yeah. You know, they all follow each other in that line, and you watch the front wheelers. Not one of the riders get out of line. Superb shot there. Already, these um, big knobbies are beginning to rip out some sort of hollow now. Obviously, if the front wheel gets a little bit out of line and the back wheel, then we'll have all sorts of trouble. And with them, oops, one, one out of line anyway, a little bit different line there. But um, as I was saying, it, once the front wheel gets out of the uh, the rut, um, obviously with it being so tight racing, then the one goes down, the whole pack goes down behind, because they really are in close contention. It's Magoo's taking over the lead. Magoo, Magoo is expected, Keith. Yeah, well, they said that he was going to be quick if he stayed on, and he's stopping on, and he certainly is quick. O'Mara in second, though. And Watley having a superb race. That's right, there's not five but seconds. Look at that. 
three Americans in the top four. And that's what counts, Keith. Yeah. But don't forget, we've got two, two yeah, English lads up yeah, there. But we're, we're still only at very early stages yet. That's right. Hudson goes through there on the 83 Honda, uh, the 83 Yamaha. Already? I should say. The same. Yeah, in <laughs> September 82, and uh, we've got the 83 Yamaha out, uh, Yamaha out already. Seems to me, Keith, you're being paid by both camps this afternoon. <laughs> But yeah, quite quite true. It is on the uh, he is on the 83 Yamaha, and, yeah, and, and there it, and there he is, there he is. We had a little bit of a look in the paddock, didn't we, earlier on? And it uh, yeah, very very smart boy, very, very smart, smart indeed. There's uh, George Joe Bay, number seven, very accomplished rider. Yeah. Although not having the best of days. No, no, he's a little way down, but yeah. uh, it's, it's only early stages. One foot comes off a peg there. Eng van Mierlo followed by Case van der Ven, so two Dutch lads uh, team racing. That's right, the last one, of course, on a big KTM. And uh, big Jack van Veldhoven, six foot six, I think, on the KTM. But back with the leader there, Magoo. Magoo from, I think it'll be, be Omara. It is indeed, it's Omara, yeah, but Omara. Magoo's beginning to make a bit of an impression now, I wish counterpart yeah. so will it be will it be omara or will it still be magoo yeah magoo's through so there omara followed by watley watley's pulled up keith yeah what this he's pushing he's pushing all the way and, and so he's thought it's like uh, bailey's lost a bit of his fender there at the front though and hudson out there on his own nobody near him except for Oh, and Diefenbach's pushing. Yeah, Diefenbach's pushing his, uh, his teammate well, there, yeah. yeah. Look at the different style there. Yeah, the Joe Bay through there. Obviously, he's been watching him on different parts of the circuit, thinking, now, where, where can I pitch just that tenth of a second off? And obviously, he, he's found it. And nip through. That's right.
Aaron then. Nobody's getting anywhere near Aaron. Absolutely fantastic stylist as well. There's there's the two uh, English. Oh, Jeremy. Jeremy put a bit of a foot wrong there, and it could yeah. have been. Uh, but it's still Thorpe and Watley, second and third. third. Followed, but on the, they're pulling a little bit away from the Belgians and the Americans there. But as I say, it's still. But it, it's, it's still for me the Americans. That's right. The Americans are the team. Mm -hmm. We've still got four in the top eight, and, and that's, that's good that's, enough. That's, that's good superb. Enough. That's right. That's good enough. But taking nothing away from the Brits, they're really trying hard. Yeah, and there they are. Look, Watley and Thorpe go through, and it's all about team tactics. And Wait. if they can keep out the. There's the first of the Belgians, that's Everts. Right. And there's Bailey. Romans, we saw just go uh, just in front of him. There's Gibson. Gibson being dropped a little bit, though, I think. Yes, he's beginning to uh, fill the pace, I think, a little bit this afternoon. Well, we, we, are, we are towards the latter stages of the race. There's Stephen back, really powering on. This this guy's really charging at the moment. See, he's even past George Joe Bay. That's right. And, 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 uh, and, George, and passing George Joe no Bay slouch. is no mean feat. He's no slouch. Would, uh, would at this particular time in the... Um, racing Keith, would um, shocks be going off the ball a little bit you think well in this heat and this this pace um things that are bound to start to uh, to feel the wear and tear of uh, well it's it's an amazing course that's right not only man but also machine yeah, yeah. There's Magoo goes through again, really throwing that dirt there. Obviously, he knows the back end sliding a bit, so yeah. when that starts. Thorpe happening... and Watley trying absolutely everything they know, but just can't get near him. No, no. There goes Vromans, there goes Omara. Sorry, that's the wrong way around. That was Everts, <laughs> Omara, and Vromans. The eight and the six, very difficult to pick out. I think you better pick your glass up again, Keith. <laughs> that's, uh... So, still with the leading three. Watley. As Jeremy Watley goes over the skyline. And there we see O'Mara. And O'Mara being pushed all the way there by oh, yeah. Romans, number yeah. six. One num uh, number one Bailey. And there's Hudson. Hudson pushing Gibson. So Neil's got back in the so, hunt again. Yeah, so, yeah. But there's the, there's Stephen back. There's the Germans. And, and of course Stephen back's going to be pushed all the way by this uh, very partisan crowd. Yeah. To the finish. That's right, and the finish. With the finish. finish, yeah. So it's Mag Magoo from Thorpe, Watley, third man, fourth man is Romans, uh, O'Mara, Everts. There's Diefenbach, Diefenbach, past Bailey. He's past two of the Americans. Well, just to reiterate what we said earlier on, we thought it'd be between the Americans, the Brits, and the Belgians, and it's just proved the case. Yeah. It was, yeah. in the end. There you go. So the Americans did tend to fade a little bit in the latter stages of, uh, of the race. That's right. That's and of right. course, the, the crowd having a, a well earned rest. But there we see the results. Danny Chandler, of course, Mr. McGurst, followed by Dave Thorpe and Jeremy Watley from GV. Harry Everts up in the fourth, followed by Johnny O'Mara in fifth and Andre Broman sixth. So it's the Americans first, followed closely by um, the English, the English boys? lads and the Belgians. And we have a shot now of the, um, well, this point, I think you better just tell them a bit of a story about it's, the uh, audience same enclosure key. It's very, very a very traditional part of uh, the Trophy of the Nations, the motocross of the Nations, that all the bikes are kept in the one area and any work that's to be done on the respective machines um, have to be done under the one roof in their own little enclosure. It's uh, is, it down, a, is it down to scrutiny? Is it down to people can obviously tamper machinery? Do you think that's the reason? Well, I, I think it's more... Um, as you've probably said, just tradition. I, I think it's just more tradition mm. than, than uh, anything. Well, it, it does, I must admit, it does seem a very sensible thing to do. Uh, yeah. There's a relaxing American sitting there with a big... Is it I, American? No, I don't think it is. I don't, I don't know who it is. He's got nice purple socks on there, but... <laughs> there's uh, Jeremy Watley yeah. having a, a word with somebody or other at the side of it. He must be very pleased with his progress this afternoon. Yeah, very pleased, very pleased. Of course, everybody under the, the same roof. You see, see there the, the fellow with the black cap on? Yeah. That's uh, Keith Thorpe's father. Uh, sorry, <laughs> Dave Thorpe's father, Keith. And That's there right. with the blue hat in the background, Bill Buckter. Uh, was Graham Norris's mechanic, wasn't it? Was Graham Norris's uh, mechanic now this year with uh, Neil Hudson. Yeah. 
and very well turned out his machine is too. Yeah. There we are, as we said before, man with the beer, um, obviously enjoying the, the West German sun this afternoon. Must be really, really warm out there. Well, there's the showmanship. Uh, as expected, Keith, the Americans doing all the uh, the fancy stuff, the wheelies, what the crowd obviously loved to see. Well, of course, the uh, as you know, Keith, I do go to quite a bit of uh, two-wheeled sport, i.e. speedway, etc. And the Americans have really excelled themselves at that this year. They've got the um, the world number one, the Bruce Panel, the world champion, of course. And, and, uh, and don't forget, they've got the 500 motocross champion Brad Lackey, Indeed. American, and the new 250 world champion motocross, Danny Laporte. So it looks like the Americans are dominating all the two-wheel sports at the moment. That's right, that's right. A little bit more showmanship there from, looks like, number one David Bailey. Yeah, hands, and hands, up hands up. out <laughs> the whole that's what scene. It's all about. That's what they love to see. Oh, well, that's, that's what the, the spectators come for, isn't that's it? Right. It's a sheer spectacle. So, all eyes down for heat two. Bit of a problem there for one of the Italians, I think. Will he wait? Will the start away? There's another hand goes up there. Yeah. I think that's his teammate saying, oh, hold on a minute. That's right. Hold on, wait for more, mate. Had a bit of a shot there of Dave Thorpe, one of the, uh, the Brits, of course. Well, there's the board out. That's a 30-second board, and he's going to turn that round for the five-second board, and then away they go. And here they come. Down goes the gate. See the who's going to be the first one to it? It's it, the Americans. Yeah, Americans. Omara again. Thought so, was well off. Now what? Oh, that yeah, looked like thought well off. Yeah. But Omara's taking the lead. It's so Omara Omara from Thorpe, I think. Just wait to come back into your view, Keith. It looked like Omara from Thorpe for me. Yeah, it looked like Noyce was down at the moment. From this distance, we can't really see the numbers, but they're definitely two Americans followed by Dave Thorpe. Yeah, and there was a bet Belgian one somewhere, yeah. sure of it. There, that looked like Jeremy Watney as well. So, all well placed again, but it's it's got to be the Americans. Yeah, they really the Americans are supreme so this afternoon. They're so consistent. There, it's America, America, Dave Thorpe, another American, a Belgian, I think that was another American, and that was Jeremy Watley. Uh, there, I think that was Neil Hudson just going through. Already at this stage, we've, we've literally done uh, one half third a, of the course. Yeah, yeah we're, we're just just coming round now to complete half a lap. Yeah, there we go. We've got the American early so dominance. So, round this hairpin, let's see who, who it is is in the lead. So, Mara from Magoo, from Thorpe. Thorpe from Gibson, that was Dee from Backwell Place, yeah. uh, the German, uh, well, Wadley, just in so it, it, we'd, uh, we'd uh, not picked up the uh, the American, well that's definitely not, there's the American, uh, Bailey I think that was, number one, a little way down so this um, yeah, what, one of the Americans down a little bit, but we'll, we'll see how the race progresses, that's right. we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have to look for him again, long way to go yet Keith, yeah, one lap completed then, and it's America one and two, Great Britain third, that's Broman's in fourth. Broman's fourth for Belgium. There's Gibson followed by that was one of the Germans, I think. And there's two Dutch lads, and um, followed by Neil Hudson. So Neil's a little bit down. Yeah, and it's, it is. Time. It's Bailey that's down. Bailey, yeah. number one, the American that's uh, that's down. In a minute, Keith will see him go down that long, steep slope. They'll really be screwing the throttle back to the stop. Yeah. They come up to that and, in, and camber. into that very, very tight hairpin at the, right. uh, at the bottom. But it's still the Americans, one and two. Thorpe pushing all the way, though. Yeah, Dave, as you know, Dave and the last leg had a tremendous slide. Yeah. So let's see so what he can do this, on, in this particular leg, anyway. Yeah, there's, uh, there's Dave from back. That's the guy that's going to do the charging, though, because he had a tremendous that's ride right, in, the, uh, yeah. in the first race. There's Noyce. Poorly placed again, though. Well, he, of course, Stephen Back did push for the laurels, but going back to Graham Noyce, um, as we said before, not having the best of rides this afternoon. Yeah, definitely not. Way. Look, look, there's Roman just passed up. That's right. So, uh, so has Dave got a little bit of um, him, problem? Well, well, we hope we hope he hasn't. Mind there you, Dave goes uh, Watley, Watley through there, splitting two, of, no, a German and an American, and there's. Uh, Jared Ron, followed by uh, Neil Hudson, and there's Bailey. Bailey pushing along now, so yeah. he's he's got to make up lost time. He's beginning to wind yeah. the throttle on. There's uh, George Joe Bay, number seven, and, uh, and 
there is noise with the green helmet. Well, of course, we saw George, poor old George, was dropping back at the latter stages of the yes. last yeah. leg, wasn't he? Yeah. But as I say, a long, long way to go. They're just beginning to pace themselves now. Of course, just going on about Dave thought we were early on, Dave is a great pace man, as you for well know, please. Yeah, and Froman's pushing Magoo now, so... But look at that hairpin, look straight in that. and straight out. Fantastic. Man. Really, really blasting that big hunger around there. So, Dave thought now into fourth place. So Dave's beginning to... Uh... He's, well, he's still, he's still with them, though. Yeah, he's still right. with the leaders. Watley goes through. Yes. Hudson goes through, so... Neil's down the big yeah, look, Hudson, Hudson's uh, going uh, pretty well now. So uh, I say, well, that'd be interesting, uh, Keith, actually, to find out Neil's comments on the uh, the 70, uh, 73. I'm ten years out on the 83 Yamaha. Yeah. Because obviously um, he's going to have a few teething problems with it early on, but it's obviously given him a good uh, start to the forthcoming season. Yeah. As you can say, a uh, few waves there for, the, for their own German fans there as the decent back went through. Oh, uh, so Omar is back into second. Roman is down to third, followed by Thorpe. And those four pulling away from next man, Gibson, and Gibson being pushed by Watley. So Jeremy Watley is still going this. Yeah. Jeremy's still got it between his... Um... There's the leader, though, Magoo, from O'Mara. Romans is through, and Thorpe's in fourth. Next man's Gibson. So it's still these Americans. These Americans are so consistent. Yeah, because... And Watley being pushed there by, uh, by Neil Hudson. Because remember, on the European circuit, Keith, we don't we, have we the don't pleasure of to... seeing these top Americans, do we? No, the, the only Americans that we that we do have the pleasure of seeing over here, of course, are, the, are the, the two world champions anyway. Uh, Danny Laporte, who's had a tremendous season, and... Um, Just shows you what kind of bloodstock's got back in the US of A. Well, this is it, and uh, it has been said that these aren't the top four... Uh, American riders are throughout it. It certainly seems hard to believe, seeing the way they're uh, yeah. chewing up the West German ground this afternoon. Yeah. Chewing it up they are, because now we see a little bit of dust flying. So when we see a little bit of a crowd gathered together, i.e. riders, we do see the dust begin to fly. So these big knobbies are really ripping it out.
just thought, though, and he's, he's been dropped steadily. But Dave looks so relaxed, don't you agree? He's so yeah. relaxed when he's yeah, riding but that look, there's deep and back is past Gibson, and he's past Watley as well. So this, that's, the, that's the man that's going to uh, yeah. push everybody else. It seems to me, Keith, it's a, it's a race of two different tracks. One minute we see Doss kicking up, the next minute we see deep uh, rutted earth. So uh, obviously concentration's got to be at a premium. It, it is a very, very hard circuit, though. Very, very, very hard. They may have a gorgeous view of the West German countryside there. There's Stephen Buck being cheered all the way there from Gibson, Watley, Joe Bay, and I think, yeah, Bailey. Bailey. So Bailey. Bailey's pushing. Pushing all the way, and there's Hudson. Seems that once the American American boys see their counterpart within the striking distance, they seem to, well, if there's room to put the throttle back anymore, they go for it. Yeah. yeah. There's uh, Romans in second place. Romans is riding a consistent place then. Yeah, from Omara. So they're gradually being strung out now. That's right, a bit of a, bit of a gap now between Omara. Yeah, there's Jack Van Velt over, yeah. but of course Jack's uh, a lap down. Or more. Or more. There's Thorpe being oh, deep and back pushing Thorpe all the yeah. way there. Is it the crowd, you think, Keith? It's, well, it's got to be the... It's got to be a, a great incentive anyway. Yeah, he's going to be pushed all the way now, isn't he? It must be very difficult when they come out of the shadows into the bright sunlight yeah. there. Yeah. Especially when they're in close contention, there's those few riders there. I, I like to see that the track is very well protected, uh, protected there, Keith. Well, it's, it, it's marvellously set up. The Germans have done a, 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 an, a, an A1 uh, job of set up. Van Mierlo nearly lost it there, though. Right. But, I mean, we were just reflecting then on, on, obviously, track safety. We see so many sports today, unfortunately, um, with a tragic end. And it's nice to see that people do care enough about well, the, people's lives. The difference that uh, we in Europe see between the uh, the famous now, the, the Ethelbrook track, and, um, and the way that this track is prepared. And, um, it's certainly been prepared with safety in mind. Well, this is it. This is it. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And what a pleasure that sunshine is. Yeah. And, and, what a, and, what a, and what a pleasure to see these Americans. Because they really are dominating everything. That's right. I mean, we're on about the Americans probably a little bit, but remember, they're so far away from their native land, where, of course, all the Europeans, they're racing against each other throughout the season, aren't they? Most yeah. weekends. So it's a nice, refreshing change to see the, uh, uh, the stateside lads in amongst them, and they're certainly in amongst them this afternoon. In yeah. fact, the Europeans are in amongst the Americans because yeah. uh, they're in a little bit of dominance at the moment. Yeah. There's the leader, Magoo, with only a couple of laps to go now. He, I say, let's be honest, he's not but not a foot so much a foot wrong as no. a wheel wrong. Off go the goggles there. There's their Romans. Romans' goggles come down. Probably getting a bit steamed up, but there's uh, Omara. But those lads must be steaming hot. Am I right, kid? But these Americans have got the same sort of style. It, it, does, it does seem that, doesn't it? You know, it yeah, it's only the numbers that are putting us right. That's right. Point. There's Bailey, the tallest of the four Americans. But even him, with the, uh, being a tall guy, um, seems to fit the machine that well. It looks like they're so relaxed when they're riding these. Well, we're coming towards the end of the race. Is that Jem there? Yeah, Jeremy Watt is through there. So. Uh, I think it's definitely going to be the Americans, oh, I and, think, uh, unless something uh, <laughs> really unexpected happens. It's got to be the Americans for me, Barry. We're just looking on the light-hearted side. I think uh, it's the true stand. They've all enjoyed, thoroughly enjoyed the, uh, the circuit and the race this afternoon, particularly the competition, because obviously it's all about competition. Yeah, yeah. You have a fine view of the. Uh, the Look mass at that, that mass crowd yeah. at the back there. The, not one of them's moved. Stayed here. I don't know about Mookie, the way they're knocking up some of them <laughs> bits of loof turf uh, makes you wonder, doesn't it? But I, I, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. They're really, our know, thumbs go up there for the uh, the Belgian rider gone through there. Yeah. And this is the lead, I think this, it's this time it's his checkered flag. A quick look back, and the it's Goo Magoo. Knows. Yeah. Two rides, two wins. What a, what a rider. What can you say? Well, in fact, what can you say? He said it himself. Yeah. There's a chequered flag, I've done it again. It's so yeah. easy, he thinks, but of course it's not. There's, there's Romans go, go through, and, and look at Diefenbach. The, yeah. the well, he must have a ride from, uh, from Diefenbach, charging through from two fairly bad starts, you'd say, but that's a, a that's tremendous right. ride from Diefenbach. Because there's Joe Bay comes through, and now that's uh, Gibson. Gibson's through. 
and we've lost Thorpe. I've not noticed Thorpe. No, I didn't see uh, Dave no, coming into Thorpe, the view. No, Thorpe's definitely gone missing. Definitely gone missing because that looks there, like Neil there's Hudson Neil Hudson there. through. There's Neil. So, oh, yeah. And there's Jeremy. So we've got... we we lost Graham Noyce earlier on. So it looks like we we are really in the cart. It'll be with interesting a, with only, to see what... With only two finishing, we've got to have three to finish. Oh. It'll be interesting, actually, too, to see what uh, Dave Nichol says about the whole proceedings because he must be a little bit disappointed with Dave's form. So, uh, Graham, I apologise, Graham Noyce's form this yeah. afternoon. Well, Let's that... hope Graham's uh, OK. Yeah, well, it's, we're, we're looking at the, ta the tail enders now, although it, it is case of Underband, I know, but... Um, we are looking at the tail enders coming in, so where where, and what's happened to Thorpe? Um, well, well, there's Dave Nichols, so Dave's Dave obviously Nichol. worried. A little bit of but bewilderment now as Dave Smith looks at Dave Nichol. Where, where, oh, can he be? Where is Dave? Crowds running across the track, so everything's in complete disarray at the moment. I think the crowd obviously senses that the, uh, the race is finished, but obviously uh, there's five minutes to go. Um, well, five minutes allowance anyway for Dave if he comes in back into view, which he's not done at the moment. Well, here he is now, Barry. As uh, as Dave just coming in now. I don't know what you think, Keith, but uh, no helmet strap, no gloves on, boots. Boots, boots not done. Not done up properly anyway. And he, he, well, it looks as if he's only just got changed. What do you think's happened? Well, something's gone wrong somewhere. Must have done. We say. Uh, uh, certainly Dave Smith or uh, Dave Nicholl didn't seem to know what was going on. No, but he, at least he's in within the five minutes uh, allowed for getting the team rider in. As you can see there by the uh, juryman looking at his watch. So it, it looks as if he's in in time, so everything's OK. Here's the results. Uh, Danny Chandler first, of course, followed by Andre Romans from Belgium, Johnny O'Mara, USA, Rolf Diefenbach, George Joe Bay, and David Bailey, the third of the Americans. So, three scoring Americans in the top six again. What else do you want? Well, there they are, first overall, Barry. The Americans with 23 points. Fully deserved. David Bailey, number one. Superb ride for me. Say one thing, Keith, that the nation would be mighty proud of them. Yeah, Johnny O'Mara, Magoo, and Gibson. But Magoo, something else. The man of the meeting for me. Belgium, second overall, 34 points. Deserved. No surprise, though. And the Germans, third overall, so <clears throat> it's down to the disqualification of uh, Dave Thorpe. You can see on the face that uh, Graham Noyce uh, doesn't like it very much, Mike. No. Graham's not put, exactly put a lot into it this afternoon, but... Yeah. So, Dave thought disqualified through not wearing gloves, and uh, that's it. So, cheerio, Geldof. We'll see you in Wolan.